All right, everyone, after several harrowing instances of seeing the stupidity that's being flung around on Twitter and elsewhere, when people are starting to develop 90s nostalgia, I'm not 100% sure why. You see, if you were hip and urban, if you were living in the burbs or something, yeah, the 90s, if you were old enough to enjoy it, probably are pretty great. You know, you had decent, <laughs> somewhat decent movies other than comedy. TV sucked, you know, unless it was like MTV or something. Uh, you could listen to, like, edgy-era Howard Stern, uh, or, or even edgy-era Don Imus, for that uh, for that matter, before he became a piece of beef jerky or something. Uh, yeah, and you got, like, Kurt Cobain and, and Audio Slave and stuff. Okay, that sounds wonderful. You know what the 90s were like in small-town America? You know, outside of the urban cores of the country? Pretty shitty. You know, Dial-up internet at your local school maybe dial up uh, or something slightly faster at your local library uh, and probably no internet at home unless you were quite wealthy you see i was raised when i was in the 90s i was in literal small town america we're not we're not even talking rutland size like i think the library here probably had internet access by the end of the 90s in woodstock it was i think 1998 <laughs> they finally got it into the library uh, a lot of places, a lot of educational institutions, it left behind the curve a little bit. I can remember when they had that thing where they wanted the electronic projectors to replace like the, the whiteboards that they had been using for, you know, a thousand years. And it's like some people, I never understood why, because it's like a waste of electricity. It's like, it's a bunch of bullshit. Who cares? Use the fucking whiteboard. Like if people can't write manually anymore, they have to type. They've stopped being able to even, like, uh, use handwriting. Like, they can't even write in cursive. I don't think they even teach it in a lot of schools now. Which is ridiculous. I mean, it should be taught. It's not going to take them that long. It's not a parallel language. It's just a different way of uh, writing your letters. I can write in cursive. I think uh, it's a, I must be a dying breed. I guess I'm getting old. No, for me, the 90s were like Sheryl Crow and dealing with Hanson and, and shit like that. The best part about the 90s was really the kids' cartoons. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's the one nostalgia. Okay, that makes sense. Like when they reboot Rocco's Modern Life, and I guess it's pretty good, um, or they're rebooting a lot of other classic 90s. Then they're trying to reboot the Thundercats. Yeah, we're not even gonna talk about the Thundercats reboot. I refuse to even talk about it. Uh, more than mentioning it would make me sick to my stomach. Of course, I think those were just reruns back in the 90s, I think. I think there was a temporary reboot that they did. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you got to realize as well, in the 90s, because of the absence of the internet, uh, or near absence of the internet, uh, really TV was the main electronic medium, and video gaming, but stop being nostalgic for old games, too. Uh, some gamers, they like, they, they ejaculate all over themselves when they think of the Legend of Zelda, like a link to the past, or something. Okay, great game, and at the time, really advanced. Can we just admit for a moment that today's modern games are more in-depth and more expansive? Yeah, I think that they are. Yeah, there were definitely great attempts, like, like especially in the late 90s. Leaps and bounds towards trying to make things realistic. And now they try to make things like retro, and so they make them less realistic on purpose. And I never understood that, like the whole point. Like the, the games that got me excited was like Star Fox 64 excited me because at the time it was really, really well done graphically. Is Super Mario 64 uh, kind of an early wave game? Legend of De Zelda, especially Majora's Mask, some of the, the graphical enhancements that they had at the time, yeah, great. But, you know, just because it technically was an open world game and expansive and elaborate and looked good doesn't mean it holds up in the long run. Still entertaining to play, but some people have way, way undue nostalgia. No, I'd much rather play like uh, Elder Scrolls. Yeah, I'd much rather play uh, uh, Skyrim. I'd much rather play, you know, the Fallout. And I'm a big Bethesda nut. Kind of upset over their uh, teaser. Yeah. Oh, online Fallout. Okay, that's that's great. Give me Fallout 5 or a massive update. Give me more Fallout 4 content or remake Fallout 3. Then I'll be happy. Why don't you remake New Vegas into an actual functional fun game uh, instead of a piece of crap made by a different developer? That would be funny. Uh, I don't think they can, by the way. It's, you know, sad because the, the, the basic concept of the game was stellar. And the storyline is good, too, but it was Glitch City. It's, like, unplayable. I'm sorry, it was more glitchy than Fallout 3. Fallout 4 looks spectacular, glitch-wise, compared to its predecessors. Unpopular opinion time, yes, is the best in the franchise because you can actually, like, build shit. Yeah, it was pretty fun. They listened to the people. 
Nostalgia for the 90s is dumb, though. Uh, the music, you know, for every good rock song that you had, and, and in all honesty, there's some really good rock in the 90s. Garbage. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, you know, stuff like Avril Lavigne back when, you know, she was more listenable. Uh, you had, as well, a bunch of whiny pop stars. Like Kid Pop, like, like what, was Aaron Carter, again, Hanson, the Backstreet Boys, and stuff. It's like, hmm, yeah, well, wonderful music. Yes, Eiffel 65, uh, you know, it is a very, very highbrow song. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, most of it was like Europop, too, that was just repetitive. It was basically, hey, we're going to hook up more electronics than they used even in the 1980s. We're going to scrap the guitar entirely. It's just going to be a couple of dueling computers, basically, <laughs> with the keyboards attached to them. And we're going to say the same three words over and over again, for the most part, while we dance around for the music video. And here's a sports car, and here's, you know, weird-looking clothes. That's the other thing, the clothing. Yeah, please don't get me started. I, I hope to never become one of those people that gets older and gets nostalgic for, like, their childhood. Mainly, the small-town 90s sucked. Urban 90s was really cool, but the thing is, your nostalgia for the 90s is prefaced on the view you get from those urban centers, typically. When you look at pop culture... Typically, what you're getting is a skewed reference of the time period. I'm, for instance, I'm acutely aware that, unfortunately, despite the fact that I love the 80s to death, most people's 80s were totally different. Still, some of them were living on, like, dirt floors without electricity and shit. Small-town America, you know, where most people live, or rural America, a little bit different from, you know, uh, San Diego or New York City. You know, where do you think most of the movies take place? Well, where, where do all these sitcoms take place in the 90s? Oh, New York City. Basically, New York City and L.A. <laughs> and that's basically it. Yeah, throw in one from Detroit. That would have been funny. Especially in the 1990s because we, we had peak violent crime. That's the other part. People are going, oh, it was a simpler, kinder time where you could leave your door. I'm like, no, bullshit. The, the biggest crime sprees of the country's history were in the middle of the 1990s. Violent crime in the U.S. peaked in the mid-90s. It is as low now as it was in the nifty 50s, another nostalgic era that's like people look back and they're like, it was so swell, and you knew all your neighbors, and everyone went to the cookout together, and you could, you know, bring your rifle to school and put it in your locker because nobody ever thought that there'd ever be violence in school that didn't involve little Jimmy getting into fisticuffs with the school bully to try to prove himself to his girlfriend, a la Andy Griffith. Basically, the Cleavers and Andy Griffith, wow, that was America, so swell. That's an illusion. That's pop culture. It'd be funny if it was that way, but it simply wasn't. Yeah, you know, listen to some real stories from people who were actually there. And if they're not, if they don't have a nostalgic glint in their eye because they're getting older and and they're starting to cry because they're like, oh, everything's leaving me behind, then they'll be honest with you. Hopefully, say, oh yeah, there's a lot of problems. Oh yeah, there was just as much screwing around going on. Yeah, there was crime. Yeah, yeah, people get people got like abortions and shit. Like yeah, the. The view of it that you get of it being an innocent time uh, is totally wrong. Uh, the 80s, same thing, unfortunately. You know, it should have been like like the uh, pop culture 80s all over the world and still should. We should be living in Miami Vice, goddammit, with neon lights and good music. And people who know how to wear their clothes right, you know, without an undershirt half the time. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Shoes without socks and, uh, you know, cool paintings. No, that's the way that the world should be. The 90s were like, you know, grunge and, you know, like, I'm bored because the Cold War is over. Uh, my parents don't understand me and I smoke weed. Hee hee. That's, and that's basically what the 90s were. And it was all corporatized anyway already. Yeah, I think that I'll stick with the internet that allows you to be nostalgic about past eras because you can actually look at shit from those eras. You know, on YouTube, which didn't exist in the 1990s, you don't get that until the middle of the 2000s, unfortunately. And, the t and it doesn't start being really fun until around 2008, because before that, what was YouTube for the first few years of its existence? Buffering, buffering, buffering. Yeah, the 2000s sucked too, for the most part. There were some good things about them, but 2010s, so far, have been way better, <laughs> actually. Like, the best decade that I've been in. Like, I can't really remember the 80s, unfortunately, because, you know, I was born at the end of them. Uh, the 90s are okay. The 2000s are okay. 2010s are far better. I can't wait for the 2020s. I hope they get even better then. Yeah, I think that I'll stick with modern internet so that I can look at all the videos and stuff from those eras while having the internet. Yeah, there's, you're going to be nostalgic maybe for classic internet from the 2000s soon. It'll be, people will be taking the dial-up tone and turning it into, like, remixes and shit again. 
and it'll be very sad, and it'll be very millennialized in Gen X, or as Gen X gets older, uh, and it'll be, it'll be dumb. That's about all. Peace out.